So today we're going to look at one of the required practicals that involves the use of a microscope, a key tool in many biological experiments, a piece of equipment that is really important that you know how to use. So we're going to look first at some of the parts of the microscope and how we use it. The cryoprac then asks you to look at some onion skin, so some plant tissue as a sample under the microscope. So we're going to look at how we're going to set that up. So we're going to look at some onion tissue under this microscope uh, and that's part of the required practical. We're also going to try and measure or estimate the size of some of the onion cells. So we'll look at how to do that as well. So first off, here is our microscope. Notice we've got a light source attached here. The light from this light bulb is coming underneath here. There's a mirror under this, uh, at the bottom of the microscope, uh, below what's called the stage. This black platform here is called the stage. So the light from this light bulb is reflecting up. So first thing to do when you've got your microscope and you've got your light bulb set up, have adjust the mirror. until lots of light is coming up here. So this should be a nice white circle in here now. So that means you've got lots of light coming up, uh, which will help you see your specimen very clearly. So you've got the light set up correctly and the mirror. Next thing to do, check that the lens in use is the smallest one. It uh, is the lowest magnification, so it will be the shortest lens. So in this case, the correct lens is in position. I would raise this up out of the way at the moment, just to uh, mean we can access the stage easily to get our specimen in. Uh, so set that part of things up. We've then got uh, other parts of the microscope. We've got the handle here for carrying it. Whenever you carry the microscope, please make sure you, you use the handle and you have another hand holding underneath the base. This is the microscope stage. We already mentioned that. This is where our, our sample will go, our microscope slide that we're going to set up in just a moment. We then have the turret here containing different lenses that help magnify a specimen. These are called the objective lenses. We have three here. Uh, we've got a times four lens, a times tens lens, and a times 40 lens. Uh, the light coming up from the mirror up to our specimen here goes up into this lens, up, up through here to the eyepiece lens. This is another 10 times magnification lens, and then we can see our sample when it's on the microscope. What this means is times four times 10 gives us 40 times magnification. That's our lowest magnification. All the way up to times 40 times 10 gives a magnification of 400 times. So this is our, this is our microscope. Now, to set up a specimen to use our microscope, we need to collect a glass slide. Please carry them like this, touching the edges only, so to avoid putting greasy fingerprints all over our glass surface that would make it harder to see our specimen. And they need to collect a bit of onion skin. So get some onion, uh, break some bits off it, and generally if you and split a small piece of onion, you're looking to get a layer, a thin layer of skin coming loose. And then you try and peel that layer off. You can use your fingers or a forceps. Fingers work just fine though. Here we go, I pulled a very thin layer. That is a single layer of cells. So we've got a very thin layer of tissue there. Lay that on your slide, try and spread it out to avoid any folding or creasing of the sample. Again, it'll make it easy to see under the microscope if there's any creases or folds of the specimen. You'll have two layers of cells underneath the microscope that you can see, which confuses what you're seeing. So try and get a nice, even layer out. Then need to add a couple of drops of iodine. So just three drops here should be sufficient. The iodine is, is a, a food test, is in it? another one of the required practicals. The iodine is going to stain the starch that's in the cells. It will help us visualise our onion cells under the microscope. They need to add a glass cover slip. Again, note I am holding it by the edges to avoid putting greasy fingerprints on the microscope slide itself, which again would obscure my vision of my specimen. So lower the cover slip on. Try and do it slowly avoiding any air bubbles if at all possible. If at this point you've got excess iodine, excess stain on the slide, you just dab with a bit of green paper towel to draw up the excess stain. You can just tap down gently on here if you feel the need to, uh, but it shouldn't be necessary. But if, it, if your cover is not sitting flat, you can just do that. So you should then have a very thin specimen preparation glass slide onion skin, 
iodine and then your cover slip. This goes onto the stage. Just place it under these clips. They're used for holding the specimen in place. Might sound silly, cover slip goes up, otherwise it will not focus, the microscope will not focus properly. So the cover slip is on the upper surface of my glass slide now. So we now have light coming up through the specimen that is now on the microscope stage. It's now to the point that people find most difficult. And this is where people find much it's very frustrating as they cannot focus properly on their specimen. So these, these are the tips you should always run through if you cannot focus on a specimen. So this is what you would always do when you first use a microscope. But if at any point using a microscope, you are finding it hard to see your specimen, run through these stages to troubleshoot that problem. Step one, make sure you're on the lowest magnification lens, our times for objective lens. Step two, get the stage and that lens as close together as possible. It is good practice to get low down whenever you are moving the stage and a lens. So I'm going to get down nice and low, then using these large dials here, they are called the coarse focus dials, I'm going to move, in this case the lens is coming down, in some microscopes you might find the stage moves, it doesn't matter which way it's going. So these are now as close together as possible. Then you need to look down the microscope and then focus, pull, turn the knobs towards you, you're going to raise the lens away very slowly. So I'm going to carefully use the coarse focus here, you might find it easier to use these smaller dials. These are the fine focus dials. They, they, make, they move this much more slowly for easy, fine adjustments. So I'm going to look down here. I'm going to raise this up until I can see my cells. And that is now in focus. I can see almost like a tiny patchwork of little bricks, little cells, sort of oblong in shape. I can see an outline around them down here. Now they're very small still at this low magnification, but they are now in focus. It is easier to do it with this small lens. Now I've got them in, in view, I can increase my magnification. All to, to do that, all you need to do is spin the next objective in, get down low, make sure it's not going to touch your slide. So again, there's lots, of spa there's lots of space there, so they're not touching, it's not going to damage the lens or the specimen. And it should roughly still be in focus. Now let me just, just adjust that quickly, so just very small adjustment, in this case I'm just bringing the, the lens up very slightly, has brought it back to focus, but I have not changed it very much. I think that's a problem people have, is they, they make big changes to their, to their focus, they, they change these dials quite a lot, they move the lens a lot whenever they change the lens. It's a, it was a very, very small adjustment. So I now have the specimen in view. And it is now at 10 times 10, 100 times magnification. If you want to go to a higher magnification, you can do that at this point. So again, getting low, make sure the, two, the lens will not touch the slide. So that is going to touch. So I'm going to have to, at this point, remove, increase the, raise the lens up. This is where you need to avoid damaging your specimen and your, your, your lens. Get your eye level with the stage, and you need to now lower the lens very, very carefully, looking from the side all the time to avoid the lens touching the glass slide. Never focus down when you're looking down the microscope because you will not see where your lens is and you could damage it by putting it onto the glass slide. So getting right down, as low as possible, that's almost touching there, and now I focus up. That very small adjustment there now has that in focus. So again, it wasn't much, much of an adjustment there, just a small adjustment, small raise of the lens has got the sample in focus again. So we've now seen how to change between our three lenses here to alter magnification when looking at our specimen sample. The next part of the required practical is to both draw some cells, but also try and measure their size. Now your teacher will talk to you about how to draw, uh, how to make microscope drawings, uh, particularly you need to just draw the outline of cells with a sharp pencil, but your teacher will discuss that with you in lessons. I want to show you how to measure the size of cells, or to estimate the size of some cells. Probably best to do this on our middle magnification, so we're going to go to the 10 times lens here. It's as low as possible, I'm just going to focus on my sample again. 
So my sample is now in focus. Now what I want to try and do is I'm going to just move my sample and move my slide. I'm going to twist it a bit and I'm going to get, get it so my viewpoint is a circle. I'm going to try and get across the diameter of the circle, so the widest point of the circle. I'm going to try and get a row of whole cells. So I'm trying to get find a point in my specimen where I have a number of cells, end of one cell, end of a final cell, are just within view. So I get a row of whole cells, or as, or as close to that as possible. So I have a row of one, two, three, four whole cells across the middle of my microscope. So I know that four cells are spanning that distance. But I don't know what distance that is. So you can actually just get a regular ruler now at this point. And I can now remove my sample. And I need to measure how wide that, that view was, that field of view. Just get a regular ruler. A transparent ruler is what it needs to be. And now I'm going to place that under the microscope. Uh, it will probably require some adjustments to focus because the ruler is quite, quite thick. You might need a friend to help you hold it in place. So I'm just going to get that focused. And I'm going to move the ruler so I can see the ends of the markings on here. Each, each marking is a single millimetre. If I look down my field of view, I want to see how many millimetre markings I can get in. And I can get in one in the middle, and one just on each, each edge of the field of view. So that is, between three different markings, that is two millimetres. So the field of view is two millimetres wide. Now, when we're using microscopes, we don't tend to work in millimetres. The units, they're, they're too large. We need to work in smaller units called a micron or a micrometre. These, uh, there is a thousand micrometres to a single millimetre. So in this case, the field of view was two millimetres wide. That is two thousand microns, two thousand micrometers wide. That was spanned by four cells. So you take the distance of two thousand microns, divide it by four, and that gives you a result for the average size of those four cells. So we've just measured the width of our cells. So in this case each cell was approximately five hundred microns wide. Uh, so that gives us an estimate of cell size, which you'd then be able to record on a, any drawing you made of this sample and you've made a record of cell size, which is a, an important part of this required practical. And that is how to use a microscope. <laughs>